Right now, ahead of tomorrow's spring election, some important things you'll want to know before you cast your vote. Plus, the latest information we have from Monona, the scene of a death investigation and a hazmat response tonight. And the UW Health team mourning the loss of a young local surgeon. Details of her tragic passing just ahead. News 3 Now at 10 starts right now. And thanks for joining us tonight. And tomorrow is spring election day across Wisconsin. Historically, turnout typically about 20 to 25 percent since this election does not include presidential primaries. So what can you expect on the ballot? Well, there are no statewide races, so this election day focuses on local seats, local referenda, school board, mayoral races, and others considered to be nonpartisan. The polls open at 7 a.m. and close at 8 p.m. And as we've seen throughout the pandemic, the rules when it comes to voting are often changing. So the Dane County and the Madison clerk's offices have some tips to help make it an easy day. Brad Hamilton joins us with some reminders ahead of election day, Brad. Eric officials tell us that the biggest thing is to make sure you know where you're voting, but that's just one of the many tips that might help make life a little bit easier tomorrow. Making your day to vote a smooth and easy process. That's what Madison City Clerk official Maggie McLean and Dane County Clerk Scott McDonnell are all about. If you're wondering if you have enough time to go vote, yeah, you do. It should be pretty quick. So before you cast that ballot tomorrow, McLean and McDonnell are stressing some crucial tips that will help make that process stress free. First, make sure you check your polling place. Because of redistricting, a lot of polling places have changed. Um, so we're really emphasizing for folks to double check where their polling place is before they head out to the polls tomorrow. Next, make sure you bring identification, whether you are registered to vote yet or not. You're going to need a, a photo ID, like a Wisconsin driver's license. Uh, that's the most common, like 90% use that. You can use a passport. There's some other things you can use as identification. Also, if you haven't mailed in your absentee ballot yet. We highly suggest they drop it at their polling place tomorrow to make sure that it gets counted because absentee ballots have to be back by 8 p.m. tomorrow in order to be counted. And last, but definitely not least, remember, you cannot use a ballot drop box for tomorrow's election. If you have an absentee ballot, you got to remember you cannot use the drop boxes. So. If you, what you can do though is if you've already filled it out, it's in the envelope, you can drop it off at the polling place so they can take it from you there. Both McLean and McDonald say that they are not expecting large crowds tomorrow, but if you are looking for the best time to cast your ballot, try to avoid the before and after work hour rush. All right, I know that was a lot of information, so if you have any questions, we have a bunch of useful resources on our website, channel3000.com. All right, Brad, thank you. Locally, we'll be covering about 150 races tomorrow from school board to referendum, mayoral challenges. News for now, channel3000.com will be your home for election coverage and all the results. Those will start coming in shortly after the polls close at 8 p.m. And across the state, one of the big races we'll be watching is for the mayor of Milwaukee, the race to replace Tom Barrett, the first high-profile election of the 22 cycle, acting Mayor Cavalier Johnson, backed by Democrats, facing off against former Alder Bob Donovan, who is favored by conservatives. And whatever happens in Milwaukee may not stay there. Democrats and Republicans are both using this as a dry run for the fall elections for governor and U.S. Senate. UW Milwaukee political scientist Mordecai Lee says a high turnout among the city's Democrats could shape the electoral map for the fall. I wouldn't be surprised if the trends uh, that start developing are that Milwaukee sort of surges back to being comparable to Dane County in terms of how many Democratic votes come out of this geography. Dane County has recently been the bluest area of the state, though it has fewer voters, but high turnout among black voters could change that. And for a breakdown of all things election related, reminders, tips and voting locations, just head to channel3000.com or download our channel 3000 news app. Next at 10, taking a look over Madison tonight. It's been a soggy start to April and several chances for more rain are on the way this week. Meteorologist Dana Fulton with a look at our certified most accurate forecast. Dana. Thankfully, it's been dry for the last few hours and I don't need the umbrella right now, but it might still be a good idea to keep it on hand for the rest of the work week, maybe just for the rest of April, as we do have some off and on showers in the forecast over the next 10 days. Our Doppler track is quiet right now, and it should stay that way overnight and for most of Tuesday. It's a good thing. It gives the ground an opportunity to absorb all of that moisture we have right now before our next round of rain builds in. 41 currently with a cloudy sky overhead and a calm breeze. Because of that cloudy sky overhead, temps won't move around too much overnight, dropping down to the mid to low 30s to start off the day tomorrow. That breeze generally pretty calm throughout the area, so not much of a wind chill to factor in for early Tuesday morning. For Tuesday afternoon, high temperatures will be in the low 50s. We'll have some patchy fog early in the day. And then in the afternoon, a slight chance for showers before the better opportunity for rain builds in Tuesday night. We'll take a closer look at your 10 day and all of the rain ahead in just a few minutes. 
Dana, thank you. Developing tonight, an apartment complex evacuated for several hours as a hazmat crew responded to the scene of a death investigation. This was this evening in Monona. A body discovered inside the apartment on Owen Road around 3 this afternoon. The apartment building was evacuated after a potentially hazardous substance was found, so the hazmat crew went in. The all clear given a little more than four hours later, around 7 tonight, and people were allowed back inside. Police said it does not appear that the death is in any way suspicious. New information tonight, Dane County authorities confirming the identity of the victim of last week's deadly downtown shooting. According to the Dane County Medical Examiner, 32-year-old Dwayne Collins Jr. of Fitchburg died from an undisclosed number of gunshot wounds. Collins Jr.'s mother identified him Friday night at a vigil held in downtown Madison. Shortly after the incident, Madison police took two men, 20-year-old Damone Cummins and 25-year-old Amon Galtney, into custody. During a press conference last week, Police Chief Sean Barnes described the shooting as a premeditated and pre-planned event. A Waukesha County judge denied a motion to delay the trial of the Waukesha Christmas Parade suspect Darrell Brooks Jr. faces more than 80 charges in connection with the incident. His attorneys filed a motion last week seeking to push the proceedings back until at least March of 2023, but it was denied today. A mother of one of the victims speaking in court. Killed did not have a choice of how much time they had left on this earth. The more than 60 injured did not have a choice of how much time they had to enjoy the quality of life they may never regain. Last week, attorneys from both sides worked to prepare a questionnaire for potential jurors whether they formed any biases, biases from the media coverage of the case. Today, the judge says she wants the questionnaires mailed in the middle of the month and returned by May 13th. She'll decide that motion in June. UW Health breaking its silence today after one of the death of one of its surgeons. They say they are deeply saddened by the loss of Dr. Kelsey Musgrove, saying she was a great surgeon, an outstanding mentor, and an incredibly kind and positive spirit. Dr. Musgrove, who was just 30 years old, was found dead yesterday morning in Iron County in northern Wisconsin near the Potato River Falls. Officials said an investigation into her death is ongoing, but no foul play is suspected. Musgrove was reportedly visiting the falls for a hiking trip. Madison police arresting six teens after crashing a stolen car in the Beltline this weekend. They range in age from 14 to 17. The car reported stolen Saturday morning from Shadow Ridge Trail on the city's far west side. Several hours later, it crashed on the Beltline on-ramp by Gammon Road. Three of the teens taken to the juvenile reception center. The others released to an adult. Also tonight, we're learning a second passenger involved in that crash last week on the Beltline has now died. Only the one car was involved last Thursday in Monona. Police say one of the passengers died at the scene. The second died over the weekend in the hospital. They have not been identified. The cause of the crash still under investigation. Police have arrested a suspected gunman in the shooting that killed six people over the weekend in Sacramento. He is 26-year-old DeAndre Martin. The shooting happened early Sunday morning in the downtown area in Sacramento. While a motive has not been identified, police are reviewing video of a large fight that broke out right before the gunfire. In Florida, <clears throat> excuse me, jury selection beginning today for the man behind the deadliest high school shooting in American history. The jury will decide whether Nicholas Cruz should spend life in prison or be given the death penalty. He pleaded guilty in October to opening fire at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland. More than four years ago, Cruz killed 17 people, injured nearly 20 others. New dramatic video from the besieged Ukrainian city of Mariupol. Drone video shows destroyed and damaged residential buildings throughout the city. It is normally home to about 400,000 people, but now civilians trapped there have been sheltering in basements with very little food, power, or running water. Evidence of war atrocities are emerging in Ukraine as Russian troops retreat from towns around the nation's capital. The depravity has sparked global outrage and President Biden calling for a war crimes trial against Vladimir Putin. Now we want to warn you, some of the images in this report are graphic. Deborah Alfaron has the latest. The horrific images of dead civilians lying in the streets just outside Ukraine's capital of Kyiv is sparking outrage around the world. Some seen here executed with their hands bound behind their backs. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky visited the town of Bucha, where hundreds of residents were killed, vowing to bring culpable Russian troops to justice. On Monday, President Biden accused Russian President Vladimir Putin of committing war crimes, adding that Putin must face consequences. We have to gather all the detail so this can be an actual have a war crime trial. This guy is brutal. Six weeks into the fighting, Russian forces appear to be retreating from regions around Kyiv in an effort to regroup. We expect they're going to 
reposition into uh, Belarus or Russia, refit, resupply, and then push those troops back in. These guys are not going home, I guess is the main point. The Biden administration plans to seek new sanctions against Russia, even though existing ones have yet to deter Putin. Sanctions are not alone going to solve any of these problems, but they are a critical tool in ultimately producing a better outcome. The new set of sanctions are expected to be announced in coordination with allies this week. Deborah Alfaron, CBS News, Washington. Ukraine's president scheduled to address the U.N. Security Council tomorrow. Russia, a permanent member of the group. The Kremlin has dismissed any accusation of war crimes. Spanish authorities seize a 255-foot luxury yacht owned by a Russian billionaire worth an estimated $90 million or more. The Department of Justice says the seizure was done at the request of U.S. officials. The ship's owner is said to have close ties to Putin. This case marks the first seizure from a newly formed U.S. task force dedicated to cracking down on sanctions violators. The votes are 11 yeas, 11 nays. On Capitol Hill today, the Judiciary Committee deadlocked along party lines on the Supreme Court nomination of Judge Katanji Brown-Jackson, forcing an additional procedural vote on the Senate floor. Democrats say they want to hold a final full Senate vote on Judge Jackson's nomination by the end of the week. She is expected to be confirmed with the full backing of Democrats and at least three Republicans so far. Maine's Susan Collins, Utah's Mitt Romney, and Alaska's Lisa Murkowski. Well, check this out. A small plane crashing into the front yard of a home in Manville, New Jersey today. That plan trying to land at a nearby airport but didn't quite make it. The local police department says there were no casualties at the scene and the pilot was the sole occupant of that aircraft taken to a local hospital for treatment. Crews in Maryland working on a new plan to refloat a stranded container ship. The Ever Forward has been stuck in Chesapeake Bay since March 13th. The plan is to remove the shipping containers using two crane barges, but those cranes need to be installed first. In the meantime, dredging around the ship will continue. Once the containers are removed, tugs and pull barges will attempt another refloat. The interim chancellor of the UW of UW Whitewater has resigned in a statement today. Jim Henderson said he doesn't feel he can make progress on hiring a permanent chancellor. Tommy Thompson appointed Henderson back in July after former Chancellor Dwight Watson stepped down following a stomach and intestinal cancer diagnosis. John Chenoweth will now take over as interim chancellor tomorrow. Still ahead tonight, the 115th Fighter Wing conducting some nighttime training this week, plus a private donation. Bring an additional canine officer to the Dane County Sheriff's Office. That story just ahead. Star and Bank, we think having choices is important, so you can choose the products that are right for your life. What are you waiting for? Explore the possibilities today at StarInBank.com. Don't get stuck with internet and TV that costs more and does less. Set yourself free with Spectrum and get it all from one provider. Get Spectrum Internet with enough speed for all your devices all at once with speeds of 200 megabits. Whoa. That's fast. Plus, get a free modem and free desktop security to keep you safe online. Get Spectrum Internet for $49.99 a month. Call 833-605-4999. And don't get stuck with the same old TV. Multiply your screens. Spectrum TV with a free Spectrum TV app lets you watch here, there, and everywhere. Stream live TV, sports, news, and more on any device. Plus, access up to 85,000 on-demand titles. Get Spectrum TV from $49.99 a month. Call 833-605-4999. Don't get stuck paying more for less. Pick and choose the services you need. Spectrum Internet or TV. Or get them both for $49.99 a month each. All with no contracts. Call 833-605-4999. At Weedman Lawn Care, we believe that a lush, beautiful lawn should be enjoyed by the whole family. That's why we offer a kid and pet friendly program to create a healthier, greener, weed free lawn that your whole family can enjoy. Our program includes effective applications of targeted weed control and slow release golf course quality fertilizer to achieve real results. Call or click today for your free quote or sign up now and see the Weedman difference. Doesn't your family deserve a Weedman lawn? <laughs> There are so many things we take for granted, and along with them, sometimes we take the people who depend on them for granted too. How can they survive with record increases in their basic cost of living? And through no fault of their own, they're being left behind. If you or someone you know needs a hand up, 
Our energy, water, and emergency rental assistance providers are working together to keep you safely in your home. You may not ask for it, but we're here to help. Today's the day to go farther with a partner that provides you innovative solutions for your own personal financial future. Explore the possibilities today at StarInBank.com. Ford Madison FC is back at Bree Stevens Field. Josh Breider has a live preview ahead of opening day and a sneak peek at what's new for 2022. More rain showers are on the way and we could see more flakes. We'll track that tomorrow morning from 430 to 7. Watching News 3 Now at 10. Welcome back. With the warmer weather, eventually comes construction season. And now projects are underway along US 51 at Stoughton. Multi-lane roundabouts are in the process of being built at three intersections with Highway 51. It's a $6.3 million project scheduled for completion in late October. Hertz is adding more electric vehicles to its rental fleet with a new deal to buy up to 65,000 cars from Swedish electric car maker Polestar. It follows Hertz's order last year for 100,000 Teslas. These new vehicles have an estimated range of 270 miles on a single charge. Polestar vehicles will be available to Hertz customers in North America beginning later this year. Elon Musk now the largest individual shareholder in Twitter. Musk has taken a 9% stake in the social media company, sending shares soaring 25% in early trading today. It comes just a week after he said he would build his own social network. Musk has 80 million Twitter followers, by far more than any other CEO. A recall notice tonight for anyone who drives a Chevy Equinox or GMC Terrain. It's part of a big recall because of issues with the windshield wipers. It's the 2014 and 2015 models we're talking about. More than 680,000 of them out there. Apparently the wipers ball joints have been wearing away so they can simply fall off. A voluntary recall. Your dealer will fix it for free. The 115th fighter wing at Truex Field just wrapping up the first night of night training this week. Today through Thursday you may see or hear the F-16s taking off landing until about 10 p.m. And the Dade County Sheriff's Office will soon be adding a new K-9 to the department. A donation from a private citizen and also former Sheriff Dave Mahoney, allowing the department to fund a new canine and pay for training as well. The sheriff says the unit is not fully funded by tax dollars, so donations are the key to maintaining a fully working canine department. Let's go to Dana Fold now. A look at your certified most accurate forecast. Dana? It wasn't quite as cold outside today, so I know you're a fan of that, yes. but we're not quite in the 60s yet either. So We'll get there. We'll get there. If we can hold on a few more days. Still cloudy outside right now. As we look at our Doppler track, things are dry. Uh, but do you know we have a cloudy sky tonight and a cloudy sky for most of tomorrow. In fact, I don't have a lot of sunshine to deliver in the 10 day. A little more cloud than coverage than sunshine for us throughout uh, most of the work week and most of next week. At least for tonight, we'll stay dry. Again, that's a great opportunity over the next uh, about 12 hours to, to really allow the ground to absorb any of that moisture right now before our next round of rain comes through. We'd like to see these showers spaced out during the spring. That's the, the best case scenario. As we look ahead to tomorrow morning, temperatures will fall to the low 30s for our overnight lows. Tomorrow afternoon, there's a slight chance for an isolated shower, but the bulk of the rain chance will build in late in the evening and continue overnight with scattered showers. A few heavier rain moments possible closer to midnight heading into Wednesday. Some isolated thunderstorms also possible early in the day on Wednesday. Otherwise, temperatures on Wednesday close to 50. We're expecting more scattered showers to build in in the late afternoon and evening on Wednesday. Again, a few possible uh, isolated thunderstorms mixed in there. Rainfall totals just Generally at about a half of an inch, could see a quarter of an inch more for areas southeast of Dane County, but in general, a measurable amount throughout southern Wisconsin. Again, enough that it gives the ground a drink. Then we have a small pause to absorb that before the next round of rain does build in. Our temperature trend for tomorrow and for Wednesday will be seasonally cool outside, but looking ahead to next week, it does look like the back end of the 10 day is trending above average. Likely that we will be above average in southern Wisconsin for our temperature trend and for our precipitation trend. We have several rounds of rain coming through for us, and this is good news. Remember last April it was quite dry outside, and that put us at quite a deficit that was hard to make up all summer. We are in a drought status all summer. So to have rounds of rain coming through in April and keep things nice and moist outside, it's, it's good news for us. As we look ahead overnight, we're mostly cloudy. Seasonable temperatures tomorrow for overnight lows and afternoon highs were close to average. More rain expected late in the day on Tuesday and a few more rounds of rain for the rest of the work week.
week and in general a little more cloud coverage than sunshine expected for tomorrow we could see some patchy fog early in the day otherwise a slight rain chance in the afternoon with a mostly cloudy sky high temperatures will be in the low 50s Wednesday we're back in the 50s with scattered showers and isolated thunderstorms late in the day Thursday will be mostly cloudy with highs in the mid 40s so Thursday and Friday we cool back down again that brings along another rain chance on Thursday possibly mixed with some light flurries early in the day on Friday Saturday and Sunday that's the light at the end of the tunnel we get a little sunshine back in the forecast Saturday will be close to 50 Sunday close to 60 and we'll stay in the mid to low 60s for afternoon highs as we look ahead to next week that's that above average bump it does come along with a few more chances for showers almost every afternoon it looks like we have the chance for some isolated showers to pass through it's getting loud down in the big easy a champion is about to be crowned we have more on this year's title game coming up next in sports Three Now First Worn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. It's Terrific Tuesdays at Hy-Vee. Get Fresh Express Iceberg Garden Salad for just 59 cents. And get a 40-pack of bottles of Hy-Vee Purified Water for just $1.88 while supplies last. Scan the QR code or check out hyveedeals.com for more deals. At Papa Murphy's, we need seriously, chop seriously, and shred seriously. Because we're serious about Tuesdays, even if you're not. Every Tuesday, get a large pizza for just $10. Papa Murphy's. Change the way you pizza. What can Sono Bello do for you? How about a new shape? Oh my gosh, I'm so happy. I just put this dress on that I haven't worn in over 10 years. New confidence. I can see a huge difference. Look at this. New you. I can wear a little black dress. I feel sexy. With Sono Bello, you can remove stubborn body fat permanently in just one visit. Don't wait a moment longer to reveal the new you. Schedule your free, no obligation consultation with Sono Bello, America's number one cosmetic surgery specialist, and find out how you can get $250 off. Sono Bello uses TriSculpt Micro Laser Liposuction to remove your diet resistant fat cells permanently for incredible transformations in just one visit. I have one big regret. I didn't go sooner. Call 1 888 622 8360 or go to sonobello.com. When an inland hurricane called the derecho cut a path through the Midwest, we learned some lessons. We learned that most buildings cannot withstand 140 mile per hour winds, not to mention most oak trees. We learned that when your roof is gone or there's a tree in your living room, even eight hours is too long to wait. But most of all, we learned that in hardship, people take care of each other. And that has been our silver lining. Madison Magazine's Best of Madison 2022. Vote for your favorites online, including A Healer's Hand in the Nest, Best Specialty Spa in Pregnancy and Postpartum Massage. Vote A Healer's Hand in the Nest today at madisonmagazine.com. Menards is your destination for your next project. Bring realistic wood and tile looks to your home with waterproof, super fast vinyl plank flooring. It's fast and easy to install. Get 11% off super fast vinyl plank. Save on bath and shower faucets from Moen. Moen faucets give you a lifetime of beauty, reliability, and innovative features. Save big and get 11% off our great selection of Moen bath and shower faucets at Menards. Save big money at Menards. It's terrific Tuesdays at Hy-Vee. Get Fresh Express Iceberg Garden Salad for just 59 cents. And get a 40-pack of bottles of Hy-Vee Purified Water for just $1.88 while supplies last. Scan the QR code or check out hyveedeals.com for more deals. News 3 Now is taking action to keep you on top of the latest breaking news. Taking action whenever news breaks with a team committed to following developing stories so you'll know all the facts. Taking action for South Central Wisconsin. News 3 Now. and North Carolina met in the national championship game. Now, since then, the programs have crossed paths a couple of times in the tournament, but not with the title on the line until tonight. The Blue Blood Championship is wrapping up in New Orleans, and what a game this has been. Now, after trailing by 15 at halftime, Kansas stormed back and took the lead in the second half. UNC looking for their seventh title, while Kansas seeks its fourth. 
The Bucks regular season finale is set. They will finish things up on the road against the Cavs this Sunday. Tip off is set for 2:30. Cleveland leads the regular season series, so the Bucks have a chance to head into the postseason with a win and a chance to even up the series. It's been a whirlwind offseason for Wisconsin football between getting a couple new coaches to seeing a lot of turnover on the roster. But something that surfaced this offseason was the possibility of Oklahoma's former quarterback landing in Madtown. The Caleb Williams rumor mill kicked off right after the start of the new year and that he could transfer to Wisconsin. In the end, Williams decided on USC and today Graham Mertz finally shared his thoughts on those rumors. It's a coach's job to find the best player. I mean, what, what am I going to say? Oh, no, I, I deserve this. I, I don't deserve anything. I mean, I, I got to prove it every day, prove it's my job, and uh, that's what I'm going to do. That's what I've always done. My confidence never has gotten like, tested to the point where I doubt myself. For me, it's just how can I prove to myself every day that um, I'm evolving into the quarterback I want to be. I think it's just doing the, the little things right every day. And he means business. This offseason, Mertz is focusing on perfecting each area of his game. And so far, the biggest change he's seen in himself is the ownership of becoming a complete quarterback. Things off the field as far as what I'm eating, um, taking care of my body more, uh, just, just doing all, trying to do everything right. And that's, it's, everybody says it, but when, when you really try to do it, um, it's just where you, you get that genuine confidence. and. Uh, I, don't know, I, I trust myself more than ever right now, and it's been, it's been really fun. Wisconsin's quarterback depth chart includes senior Chase Wolf and a pair of freshmen. Deacon Hill returns with Miles Burkett as an incoming freshman from Franklin. Wisconsin's softball stellar stretch is paying off. The Badgers have cracked the top 25. They're coming in 23rd in the RPI rankings. UW boasts a 20 and 8 record, 5 and 1 in Big Ten play, and have won nine of their last 10 games. Badgers are coming off another series win where they took two of three from Indiana. Wisconsin was supposed to play UW Green Bay this week. That series got canceled, so they'll return to action on Friday against Illinois. And three more days until it's the real deal. The Brewers take it on the Rockies in their second to last spring training game tonight. Late start for the crew. They're trailing 5-2 to two in the sixth inning. Brewers have their final spring training game tomorrow against Kansas City. We'll be right back. Not all accidents happen on busy freeways. They happen in neighborhoods like yours. No matter where your accident happened, Gruber Law Offices is here to help. Gruber Law Offices. One call, that's all. With broken supply chains and lives disrupted, businesses like Amazon have invested to deliver on time for you and help hundreds of thousands of small businesses gain access to millions of online shoppers. But Washington politicians have a law that could break Prime's guaranteed two-day free delivery and threaten our fragile economic recovery. Tell your senators, don't break our Prime. Oppose us 2992. Paid for by CCIA. I grew up working in my family's supper clubs. This is where it started with us as far as the fish that we serve at Culver's today. We source the finest cod and batter each filet by hand and always cook it to order. That beautiful golden brown color and flaky on the inside. The fish fry is a Midwest tradition. It's about families coming together. I love bringing this tradition to guests everywhere. Mom and Dad would be proud. Welcome to Delicious. At Ho-Chunk Gaming Madison, the switch is always on. It guarantees the highest average payout percentage in the region. This leads to better odds and more wins than any place else around. Nobody messes with the switch. Ho-Chunk Gaming Madison. You call me Love it. 
at Machinery Row Bicycles, you'll find Wisconsin's largest selection of road and triathlon bicycles from Moots, Giant, Felt, Waterford, and Trek. Trek has a great lineup of sport touring bicycles that are great for day tours and charity rides. The place to shop for the world's most beautiful bicycles is Machinery Row Bicycles, the most beautiful bicycle store in the world. Free adjustments and service are included in your Machinery Row Bicycle. So many fun things to look at and bicycles to test ride on the bicycle path by the lake at Machinery Row Bicycles. We all share the same roads, but when an accident happens, we don't always share the same consequences. Gruber Law Offices has been fighting and winning for people injured by big trucks for more than 30 years. One call, that's all. Trust the First One Weather Team for your most accurate forecast. On the next slide before UW Health, Dr. Jeff Potoff is along with the latest COVID and vaccination news. And as we begin a new month, Consumer Reports has its best buys for April recommendations. You're watching News 3 Now at 10. Tonight, a little something you don't see every day. A baby seal in the middle of the road? This happened in Southampton, New York yesterday. Some people called police after they saw the seal wandering through a parking lot. It made its way near a hotel before it was rescued from a traffic circle. The New York Marine Resource Center had a team come retrieve the baby seal. It was brought to a rehab center. Just uh, wandering a little Aww. off the beaten path there. I assume the... Ocean there in Long Island isn't too far from where he is there, but oh, safe yes. now and yes. said to be doing well. Make yeah. sure that he's good. all good to go before they just put him back in the water. Yeah. Oh, the Dana's back, <laughs> final check of the forecast and uh, kind of a, you know, a little gray weekend. It is, it is a little gray outside. Today was one of those like Monday blues, gray kind of days with the clouds overhead. Mostly dry this afternoon though, and it's going to stay that way for Tuesday. Again, good to get a break in the shower chances. A slight chance for some rain late in the afternoon on Tuesday, a better chance for rain coming through Tuesday overnight. For Wednesday, high temperatures will be in the mid 50s. It'll be comfortable outside, but it could get a little stormy in the afternoon. A uh, chance for showers and thunderstorms building in late in the day. Thursday and Friday will be cooler with highs in the 40s. Overnight lows dropping down to the mid 20s by Saturday morning. That's thanks to a clear sky, though. So we're back to sunshine for Saturday and Sunday. Saturday close to 50 for afternoon highs. Sunday in the upper 50s. That leads into next week with highs in the 60s. Some more April showers expected, but with better temperatures coming through. So that'll be nice. All right, Dana, thank you. Thanks for joining us for News 3 Now at 10. Have a great Monday night.